when I was first putting this together, um, I got interested in a little bit of the history of the artificial heart. Um, back in 1969, a 47-year-old man um, received an artificial heart in Houston. He lived 65 days. It was externally powered. Um, they were hoping for a donor heart, but he died 30 hours after receiving the transplant. So he did receive a donor heart, um, but died after the transplant. His wife tried to sue the doctor, um, saying that she and her husband had not been properly informed about the experimental nature of the artificial heart. Um, that lawsuit was dismissed. Then in 1981, a very interesting named person, Willa Brodus <laughs> Mufels, 36-year-old, uh, received an external, externally powered artificial heart at St. Luke's. The heart kept the Dutch tour bus driver alive for 54 hours until he received a heart transplant on July 26th. He died July, August, days, okay, with massive infection and failure of multiple organs. Now, federal regulators at that time told Cooley, that's the guy who, um, you know, was putting these hearts in, that further such use of artificial hearts would require advance approval. Wasn't doing so good. Now this guy, Barney Clark, um, 61, he was dying of heart failure. He received a Jarvik 7. Um, Jarvik 7 is named after the doctor who designed it in 1982. He returned to surgery twice because of complications. He had seizures. He developed pneumonia. He ended up dying of multi-organ failure in 1983, December to March. It was a struggle throughout, 112 days. Um, but he looked at it as if it was one in a long series of experiments. He knew eventually he would die on the device. And you can see here he had a trach, and this must have been a good day. William Schroeder was the second Jarvik 7 recipient, and he lived the longest at 620 days. His pump was implanted in 1985 in Louisville, Kentucky. He had a series of strokes, couldn't breathe. Um, he did live outside of the hospital for a while with his artificial heart. Here's a Swedish person. Got an artificial heart in Sweden in 1985. He survived 229 days. He was able to leave the hospital. He even was able to eat in restaurants, but he died of a massive stroke. So here's a couple patients now who've had stroke issues after these artificial hearts. Jack Bertram, 62, got his artificial heart in 1985. He died 10 days later of breathing complications. Mike Templeton was very young. He got an experimental HeartMate. Um, by the way, HeartMate is um, the company that does the LVADs that Barnes uses. Uh, he re Oh, this is it. I'm sorry. The experimental heart mate, which is a left ventricular cyst device in 1991. He lived with it in his chest for 16 months. Now, this is the one where um, the pump is inside, but the tubings come out. He was able to visit his family at home. He spent some time out of the hospital. He was waiting for a transplant when he died of a stroke in 93. I'm looking at, looks like a year, well, it says 16 months, so. The Abacore Implantable Replacement Heart is the first completely self-contained artificial heart. Robert Tools was 59 years old. He had an 80% chance of dying in 30 days when they put this heart in him. This is in 2001 at a hospital in Louisville. He died July to November from abdominal bleeding. Ten other patients have also died um, at the time that I put this together, but the recipients of the Abacor heart have lived an average of five months after their transplants. So um, since then a few more people have had this thing transplanted. I mentioned earlier that there have been 14 patients as of April of 2011. Um, there's Robert Tools. 
with his artificial heart. You can see he looks like a pretty happy guy. Um, he wasn't go going to survive without it. What I found interesting, and we're close, uh, Gerson Rosenberg is a physician um, and an engineer at Penn State University, and he, he has spent 20 plus years researching um, and trying to develop the artificial heart. And he says that in theory, the electric heart will offer advantages over a transplanted heart. No chance for rejection, so no anti-rejection drugs. Um, people will need anticoagulant, that's understood, but this is generally not problematic and has few side effects. He says that many people die waiting for their donor hearts. The electric heart could be on the shelf and ready for implantation as soon as the patient needs it. If there's just some issues, uh, seemingly uh, stroke issues and bleeding issues and, you know, it's going to happen, but I don't know when. That is it. Enjoy. I will be posting to YouTube and giving you instructions.